Okay, this is part two of the average timer app design. The first part was me sketching out some basic screens. So go back and watch that if you haven't already. And in this one, I take those screens in and turn them into a very simple prototype so I can kind of validate my idea. In the next video, I'm gonna start making higher fidelity screens and adding in some real animations. I also redid the sketches from the first video. I just kind of traced over them. So the first bit of this video is a time lapse of me redoing those sketches. So stay tuned for the next few days as I finish up this app design into a nice polished prototype by Friday. All right, so I've got my updated sketch and I brought it into Sketch on my Mac. And all I did was just copy regions of the overall sketch image that I took from my iPad and paste those into individual iPhone sized artboards. So I've got each screen of my app here in Sketch in an artboard but it's still just a sketchy rough version and I'm not gonna draw any fancy UI at this point. And I just did this in Sketch so that I can use, you know, so that I could crop the image and put them into artboards. But now I'm gonna use the Send to Flinto Sketch plugin to bring all this stuff into Flinto. Okay, so here I am in Flinto and the first thing I wanna do is give these screens better names. Okay, that's a bit cleaner. And next thing I'm gonna do is arrange these screens in a way that I like. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is link together these screens. This is really easy because I'm not gonna worry about transitions or animation or anything like that. I'm just gonna click draw link, draw a link over this button, and that's the start timer button, so it'll take me to the timer screen. So I'll click there. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the detail area here. So I'm gonna hit D on my keyboard. That's the shortcut for draw link. And I'm just gonna make one big link over all of the detail rows because I only have one detail screen. But that's fine because it kind of represents the overall concept. So I'll Click down there, and from this detail screen, uh, I'll make a link on this start timer that goes to the detail timer screen. And from the timer screen, well, I've got a pause button, but I was supposed to have a stop and a play button here that would expand out when you hit pause, but I, I haven't created that yet, or I didn't include it in my sketch, rather. So for now, I'm just gonna make one link that goes over to here, kind of pretending that this is the stop button. And again, it's really fine to be loose with your interaction like this. You know, I don't have every last detail, but that's fine because I'm trying to get the broad strokes here. From the detail timer screen, um, that will go back to the home screen because it doesn't need to ask for a name because you came in from a detail screen, so it doesn't need the name. All right, and when you're on this timer name screen, uh, I'm just gonna make it so that tapping anywhere here will go back to the home screen. In reality, you'll have to actually type in a name or tap one of the individual items but then it will take you back to the home screen. So this, this gives you the general idea. Okay, now I'm gonna open the preview and we can test out what I've got so far after just you know a few seconds of prototyping. I can hit the start timer button, stop the timer, put a name in, go back to the home screen. I could tap on a detail, see the detail view, and I can start a timer from here, stop the timer, and I go back to the home screen. Now one thing I noticed, or I kind of realized as I went through that, is that when I'm here on the detail screen, I should probably have a way to get back to the home screen. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, and I need that stop and uh, resume button here, ideally. So let's, let's uh, make a couple improvements. First was that backlink from the detail screen. I'm just gonna hit T on my keyboard and then click to type in a text layer. I'm just gonna write back here. Again, this doesn't need to look pretty. I'm just trying to get the functionality here. Okay, I'm gonna draw a link around that and that's gonna go back up to the home screen. And I'll test that in the preview real quick. Okay, now I have a way to get back. And now let's do the um, stop and resume buttons here. So the idea is, again, when you hit pause, a stop button and a resume button are gonna fly out. You'll use stop to get to the timer name screen and resume will just go back to the timer screen. So I'm gonna delete this link and I'm gonna draw in those buttons. I'm gonna draw two circles and I'll set the background color of those circles to match this pause button. I'll give them a border, give the width a little bit, give those a dark border. All right, for the play button or the resume button, which is gonna have a play symbol, I'm gonna insert a vector shape and just draw a simple triangle, like a play button. And I'd like to use a similar gray color for that. That's a really ugly play button, but that's totally fine. And then I'm gonna draw a square on the stop one. And a quick way to get the same color here would be to select the triangle, press Command Option C for copy style, and then select the square, 
Command Option V to paste the style in there. All right, I'm gonna group these layers and group these two layers and I'll place these up here. Oh, you know what I'm gonna need is a rectangle. So I'll hit R. I'm just gonna draw a rectangle over the pause button and choose a color that matches the background so that it hides the pause button. Then I'll fade that out because initially you're not gonna see that rectangle and you'll see the pause button. And I'll put the stop button here, the play button here, and I'm gonna fade those out because all this stuff is gonna be hidden initially. Now I'm gonna select everything on the screen, the two buttons that I just created and the background, and I'm gonna create a behavior. So I'll click behavior and I'll add a new state. In this state, that rectangle is gonna be faded in, the one that covers up the pause button. And then my play and pause button, or my, sorry, my resume and stop buttons are gonna be faded in like that. Now I should have put those on top of that rectangle. So let me exit out of the behavior designer and I'll go into the layer list and make sure that those are on top of the rectangle. Okay, let me edit this behavior again. I can test the animation and I just need a link to go between these two states. So from the initial state, tapping on the pause button will take me to the new state. And from the new state, tapping on the resume button will take me back to the initial state. If I hold shift and click preview, it'll open up with this screen in the preview window. So I can test this out. Hit pause and then hit play to keep going. Now stop is gonna take me to another screen and I can't set that up in the behavior designer because in the behavior designer, I can only go to other states. So let me give this behavior a name. I'll call it pause, I'll exit out of the behavior designer. And what I can do is select that behavior group in the canvas and change the initial state or the default state to new state. And that's that second state where you can see the two buttons. Now I can click on the stop button more easily and I can create a link from there to the timer name screen. And then I'll switch back so that the default state is the initial state. So you see the pause button from the start. Okay, back to the preview. I'm gonna do Command Shift P with that screen selected so that that's the one that opens in the preview window. Now I can hit pause, hit stop, and I'm taken here. Perfect. Now I just need to add that to the detail timer screen because this should behave the same way. So we can reuse behaviors. I don't need to create that animation again. So I'm gonna delete this link. I do need to grab my uh, stop and pause buttons and that rectangle that covers over it. So I'm gonna select those three layers in the layer list, copy them, select the detail timer screen and paste them in. Maybe I'll nudge those up a little bit. And I'm gonna select everything on this screen, put a group around it. And over in the inspector by behaviors, I'm gonna say add behavior and choose the pause behavior. Now I can edit this behavior just to double check that everything is looking right. The tags were applied in the right places and it looks like the animation works right. So this is fine, I'll exit out of here and I can test this out in the preview. So let's go back to the home screen, hit one of the detail ones, hit start timer from there, and now make sure that this works. Okay, looking good. So this is pretty good. I've got all my screens linked up and I even added in a little bit of animation just because I didn't have a way to access that um, play and stop button. And so now I can open up the preview and what's really important here now is to use this prototype to put myself in the mind of a user of this app, because that's what the whole point of the prototype is. I drew it out on paper first and thought of the overall structure, but now I can actually test that structure and make sure that it really works and that it really makes sense. This is very close to, the, to what it will feel like to interact with this app when it's already finished. But because I have this prototype, I've only spent you know maybe 30 minutes at most from sketching up till this point. Um, so I can really quickly verify my idea rather than waiting until this gets implemented by a developer and then to find out that something was structurally wrong because it's really costly to go back at that point. So let's see, I'm just gonna pretend that I came into the app and I wanna start a new timer. So there's this obvious green button, I'll tap that, let the timer run, then I come back and I go, you know, I'm immediately thinking, well, I wanna stop the timer, but there's no stop button. So is that confusing? Like, well, no, I think it's like, there's only really one button here and it's pause. Pretty obvious what that does. So I think people will tap it. And then it pops this up and you go, ah, oh, okay, here's the stop button. Tap that, type in the name. Okay, seems reasonably good to me. 
And maybe I want to inspect one of these, look at the dinner timer, see what uh, the average is, look at the graph, go back. So it's really important to not just mindlessly click through your prototype, but to really think of it as if you're a user of the app really using it. Because as soon as you make that kind of switch in your head, which is pretty easy to do when you're using a real prototype, you'll start to realize things that are wrong. I guarantee that you're going to find mistakes. And you can improve them really quickly because even if you had to go all the way back to the sketching stage, you can do that because it only took a few minutes to make that sketch. But what's really disastrous is if you don't make a prototype, you don't think through the structure, and then you get these, uh, you, you know, you design high quality visuals and you get them built, you spend a lot of time on the visuals and the developer had to get involved and then you find structural problems and it's probably too late to address them or very costly. So because I'm happy with the structure that I've got here, in the next video, I'm gonna start working on those higher fidelity visuals. We'll take this from an ugly sketch into something that hopefully looks kind of nice. And then we'll start adding the animations and by the end, I should have something that really looks like a finished product.